Do power gains NA equate to power gains under boost? In this video, we compared a set of 706 5.3 liter truck heads to a set of 317 6 liter truck heads. It's an age old comparison, compression versus airflow. We ran this test both naturally aspirated and under boost. So tell me this, do the gains naturally aspirated equate to gains under boost? Okay guys, right off the bat, I wanted to apologize for the audio quality in the last clip. I filmed that in the dyno cell with my cell phone and no mic. As you can see, all this other stuff has a mic. The audio quality is much better. So going forward, they should all be like that. But let's get to our test motor. The test motor used to compare the 706 heads to the 317 heads was a Junkyard LM7 5.3. Now we made a few modifications to it to help it make power, including a healthy comp cam, valve springs, and an LS6 intake. Now, if you'll notice, that camshaft was a healthy one. The 54-454-11 cam from Comp Cams had some healthy specs, especially for a 5.3. And you'll notice from the NA results, this cam helped the motor make good power. But not only did it work well NA, it also worked well under boost, which might surprise some guys because this is a cathedral port motor and technically that's a rec port cam. But don't worry, it works well. To dial in the air fuel and timing values, both on our NA and turbo combinations, we relied on a Holley HP management system. We also installed a set of 83 pound Holley injectors to support the power levels on our turbo combinations. But for right now, let's take a look at the results of our NA combination, comparing the 706 heads to the 317 heads on our 5.3. To get things started, we equipped our 5.3 first with the 317 heads. You'll remember that this motor was equipped with that healthy comp cam at 54-454-11 and the LS6 intake. So equipped with the 317 heads, the 5.3 produced 448 horsepower at 6800 RPM and 398 foot-pounds of torque at 5000 RPM. So it's a healthy little 5.3 even with those 317 heads. Now let's take a look at what happens when we replace the 317 heads with the 706 heads. As you can see, we got a big change in power basically everywhere all the way through the curve. The peak number jumped up to 468 horsepower at 6,800, which is a gain of 20 horsepower, and 413 foot-pounds of torque at 5,300 RPM. If we take a look here, we can see we got basically big gains everywhere from the bottom to the top. That's the added compression. And at this power level, the 317 heads, the extra flow offered by those 317s weren't really offsetting any of the change in compression ratio. So obviously on this NA53, having the extra compression from the 706 heads at this power level was more than enough to offset any flow gains offered by the 317 heads. So this is on a naturally aspirated 5.3. Now let's find out what happens when we add boost. After comparing the 706 heads to the 317 heads on our naturally aspirated 5.3, it was pretty obvious the extra airflow offered by the 317s didn't overcome the extra power offered by the change in compression from the 706 heads. But that was on the naturally aspirated 5.3. What about under boost? To find out, we installed our single turbo kit on the 5.3. Now that custom turbo kit allowed us to install a precision 7675 turbo and an air to water intercooler from Procharge. We ran dyno water through the cooler, which is about 80 degrees. Boost was controlled by a pair of TurboSmart Gen 5 wastegates equipped with seven pound springs. We also had a manual wastegate controller with one turn, and this produced a peak boost of about 8 PSI. Now we'll go into the boost curves later on in the results, but for now, let's find out what happens when we compare the 706 to the 317 under boost. After equipping our 5.3 liter, and the 317 heads with our single 7675 precision turbo and air to water intercooler. We dialed everything in right near eight pounds of boost and equipped with that single turbo and the 317 heads. 
Our 5.3 made 691 horsepower at 6,700 RPM and 612 foot-pounds of torque at 5,000 RPM. And if you notice, those power peaks occurred at uh, basically the same spot they did when this motor was NA. So the turbo helped out quite a bit, as we expected, and the 317 heads obviously responded well to boost, as they always do. But now let's take a look at ha what happens when we ran the same turbo combination with the 706 heads. So if we select our 706 head, as you can see, basically the same thing happened that happened when this motor was NA. We have power gains all the way through the curve. The boost was kept consistent. As a matter of fact, uh, if anything, the boost was slightly lower with the 706 head, and I'll show you the boost curve in just a minute, than it was with the 317 head. But equipped with those 706 heads, the extra compression obviously added power. The peak power jumped up to 723 horsepower at 6,700 and 638 foot-pounds of torque at 5,100. Again, the power peaks occurred at basically the same spot. So we know that the turbo was working and everything was doing what it's supposed to. And obviously the, that cam, even though it's an NA cam, it's not just an NA cam, it's actually a Recport NA cam, still working well on this little 5.3, both NA and with boost. But this test just goes to show you that if you have a 5.3, something you get from the wrecking yard, and it has 706 heads on it already, putting a set of 317 heads might not be a good idea. Although if you guys want to lower the compression, so maybe you can run a little more boost or a combination of boost and timing on pump gas, that might be a good way to go. Let me know what you guys think. This final graph is a comparison between the boost curves with the 706 heads and 317 heads. And as you can see from the curves, they were not identical. The boost curve on the 706 head was actually slightly lower than the 317 head. But you know what? It doesn't really make a difference. I didn't have access to my electronic controller to make the boost curves exactly the same, but the reality is the results would still be the same. As a matter of fact, the results would be even more one-sided in favor of the 706 head. You see, it made more power than the 317, even with less boost. So if we made that nice and even so they were exactly the same, the gains from the 706 would be even greater. Here is the final graph of our results. If we take a look at this, this is the boost curve offered by that 7675 with the 5.3 and 3.17 heads. Note that we did not run an electronic boost controller on this. We had a manual controller. And actually, I didn't make any attempt to adjust the boost with the controller. I just ran the heads with the controller in the same spot. And we kind of lucked out on that, that the boost curves came out similar, uh, although as we'll see, not identical. And I probably should have adjusted it so that the boost curves were identical. Uh, it would have shown even greater power gains. This is the 317 head, and this is the turbo run with the 706 head. As you can see, we're close. This is uh, you know about a tenth of a, of a pound of boost, so very little. But out here, out at the top, in this area, the seven. this is the 706, this is the 317. The boost on the 706 run was actually lower than the 317 run. What that means is that the power difference between the two, the 706 would be even greater had I adjusted the boost. The problem is for me to adjust the boost with the manual controller would have raised this point above this to bring this up to here. What I really needed was an electronic wastegate controller to get the boost exactly the same because at this boost level, which was you know, somewhere between seven and a half and eight pounds, the controller would have been able to control this thing. Right now, we just ran on the spring with that, with that manual controller. So the gains offered by the 706 over the 317 would probably be even greater than we were showing here, greater than the 30 plus horsepower that we showed under boost. Um, if we change that by three or four tenths of a pound of boost, we may pick up another 10 or 15 or something with a 706 head. But it just goes to show you, if you go get a 5.3 from the junkyard, uh, don't upgrade to 317 heads, again, unless you're trying to lower the compression so you can run on pump gas and you think it's gonna work a little better with your combination of timing and boost that you run on low octane pump gas. 
So what do we learn from this test comparing the 706 heads to the 317 heads? Well, the first thing is, if you go to the junkyard, pick up a 5.3, add a cam, springs, and boost, you're going to do pretty well with the heads that came with that motor. That's right, whether they're a 706 or an 862 head, those factory heads on the 5.3 work very well. Better, in fact, than the 317 heads, even though they flow more. You see, when we ran this test, naturally aspirated, the extra compression offered by the 5.3 heads was much more beneficial than the extra airflow offered by the 317 heads. At no point during that NA test did the extra airflow come into play and offset that change in compression. So what happened under boost? Well, as we saw by the results, the same thing happened under boost. The 706 heads were better NA and under boost. Does that mean there won't be a point anywhere with as much boost as we can run that the extra airflow won't come into play? So what do you think? Will the 317 heads ever make as much power as the 706 heads at any boost level? Let me know in the comments. Let me know what you think. When does that extra airflow actually come into play? But you know what? I don't think that's the real question. When we're comparing the 317 and the 706 heads, I think the important question is, when can it help? When would lower compression actually be beneficial? In my opinion, maybe on a streetcar running pump gas, if we lowered that compression, would we be able to run more timing and more boost on the low compression with lower octane? Let me know what you think. Make sure to comment, but also make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, but make sure to comment. Let me know, will the 317 heads ever make as much power? Would they be beneficial on a low octane pump gas streetcar? Let me know, and thanks for watching.